So, Mark, did you see the Planet Hollywood's chapel on Twitter? Uh, they posted a video of it, uh, I guess, before a wedding, and people kind of jumped all over it, saying that it looked more like a, a funeral. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Yeah, I like the comment that's like folding chairs uh, tells says luxury to me. You know, it does seem a bit. I mean, if you're going to put a wedding chapel together, like make it. It's a small space. It doesn't cost that much to make it look nice. I don't know if you're repurposing something or you use it for other stuff. It felt like the Taco Bell wedding chapel to me. <laughs> Although that might have been better. Who knows? At least that wasn't folding chairs, I don't think. Yeah, my favorite comment was, where is the casket? Uh, but uh, yeah, they, <laughs> of course, they, they deleted the tweet. So uh, no uh, no wedding chapel anymore. But we saved it forever. It will never go away. <laughs> We talked about on the show that you were coming to Vegas and we were going to go around and do all kinds of crazy things. And then, of course, I had to go to Hawaii and uh, I caught COVID on the way back or I don't know how it all happened. I think I actually got it back here in Vegas uh, once I was back here a couple days. But nonetheless, uh, I've been down for the count for the last week or so, right as you were supposed to come. So we didn't get to do our, our grand tour of the Las Vegas Valley. And we were supposed to do two videos last week and we, me we messed that up, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, got, we got lucky. At least we did the MGM Rewards one before I got sick. So yeah, uh, we got something out there. Yeah, I even tried uh, to reach out to a mutual friend in Vegas and some other people in Vegas. And I was like, hey, you know, I might still come out. Are you available? Uh, and they're like, no, I just tested positive. So like Vegas is <laughs> is kind of yeah. uh, everywhere. It's everywhere. Like half the people there, I feel like have it. Uh, at least a very a vast majority of the people I talk to do, which is kind of crazy. That's all happening at once. But that's the world we live in. The cool thing was I was able to cancel the flights because, you know, with with the pandemic and everything, airlines have allowed free cancellations. And I can't we waited until like the day before. And that's when you finally got the positive test results back. So I canceled. No issues. I got credit. That's good. You know, well, Delta just extended till 2023. So uh, plenty of times to use that. And uh, MGM, uh, it was a comp room. But I went and they're like, oh, you're within the you can't cancel. Um, so we're going to have to keep the fee that you paid up front or the, the deposit. Your deposit of zero dollars will not go back <laughs> back to you. I was like, OK, but they did have a thing in there. If you if it's because of COVID or whatever, call us. And we'll do it. But I think it's still kind of crazy that it was more than a full day out. Like, this shouldn't be an issue. You guys should know what's going on. But, you know, that's MGM, I guess. Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. As you pointed out, I know a ton of people who got who got COVID uh, from just that, that weekend in Vegas. Now let's, uh, so yeah, so hopefully we'll get to do that trip at some point. We'll get to take you all around all the places that you uh, that you haven't seen. I was really looking forward to it because there had been some casinos and places I hadn't been in a while. Um, I, I feel better. I'm hoping next week. Uh, I delayed, uh, we're, we're leaving for a while, but we delayed that trip for, for a, a week. So I'm going to have a little bit of extra time. So I'm hoping I'll be able to go to the Strip and stay down there and do some stuff next week. So hopefully... Uh, we can get that uh, on the channel. Now, I did want to follow up also on my Allegiant customer service experience. Uh, people who watched the, the show know a few weeks ago that Allegiant kind of screwed me on my Raiders tickets that I had as part of a hotel package. They sent me, you know, like the cheapest seats they could when they were supposed to send me 200 level tickets. I said I wasn't going to like... 400, 400 and 200 is about the same. You know, it's just yeah. like a mile higher. But besides that, it's fine. Yeah, so... <laughs> So like I had filled out a form, but I wasn't going to go through like, you know, spending hours on the phone dealing with them. And so I finally got a response to my, you know, filling out the form almost a month ago, I think, <laughs> several weeks ago. And here's the response. It says, thank you for contacting Allegiant. We apologize for the delayed response. We are experiencing a high demand in emails and we're trying our best to respond as quickly as possible. If you still need assistance, respond to this email and then we'll take another three weeks to... Uh, to answer it basically so that's the allegiant customer service the brush experience. off <laughs> yeah pretty much they probably went through all the things that have been sitting there for a month and just hoping oh we'll we'll send this as a courtesy hoping that you don't respond but i did respond to the email saying uh yeah you didn't give me the tickets that i was supposed to get uh it's not resolved so we'll see if somebody actually responds to that we'll, we'll play this game keep it keep it going even though uh, everything is long past but that's that's an update don't book through allegiant vacations Stay far away from Allegiant.com when you're booking any travel. That'd be my suggestion uh, based on my experience. Good advice. Sage advice that everybody already knew. <laughs> <laughs> except me. Well, I still, yeah, it still worked out okay. Okay, so CES happened and, 
you know, it was a couple weeks ago, but we didn't have a show last week or at least a new show last week. So I thought there was a cool, a few cool takeaways there. The first takeaway I saw was just that it was empty, right? We saw like the LG booth, which was just like a few little things and like vast amounts of empty space, a lot less people. I think only about 40,000 people came. Uh, but what were some of the coolest things you saw on the floor? Yeah, there, there was a video on Twitter I saw of color changing cars where it would go from like white one second to black the next second. I don't know how this is useful unless you're, you know, a drug dealer or a robber, a bank robber. <laughs> it's like GTA. GTA. Did you ever play GTA back in the day where you had to like yeah. paint your car? You took it to the, yeah, now you don't even need to do that. You just flip the switch. <laughs> yeah. So you could just drive down the street. Oh, we're chasing a uh, white car. And then you're just like, boom, black. Here we go. Take a right. Turn it to black. Let's go. We're good now. I think it's yeah, pretty I cool. I think it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's temperature sensitive, so it doesn't always work well. But I would love to see it in person because it looks, I mean, it looks pretty cool, in, like magic in the video. Did you see any of those like really creepy robots that have been, that were around at CES with like the really, they look like from iRobot, that very human looking face? Oh, yeah. I did, I did see that video where they were asking her questions and she could kind of come up with like unique responses and everything. It was very very creepy you know this is how terminator 2 started <laughs> so rest of machines is coming uh the end of the world probably in five years yeah pretty much uh, that's what uh, elon musk said uh, speaking of elon musk well he didn't say five years but he said ai is like a is a big threat uh but speaking of elon musk ces also brought traffic jams in the tesla tunnels under the convention center renewing everybody's criticism of the system and how it might work uh yeah there, there were people kind of stuck there for minutes waiting for the cars to clear out and uh, people are not yeah. happy about it. Yeah. And that, that's the thing. Like it's still way better than what they had before. You know, minutes is better than walking 30 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it takes. But the fact that they promise they over promise all this stuff is the issue. And then if it's in the small tunnel and they're having problems and they're having drivers and, and all this, all these other issues going on and all the jokes we've made about it, when it goes to a, a, the Vegas wide system, what are the problems going to be there? You know, so it, it doesn't make me feel I did call this that there there would be challenges, <laughs> but um, it doesn't make me feel good about, you know, the future. It could still be better. And it's, you know, if it gets cars off the road, that helps. But I don't think it will be as slick as, you know, like a minority report movie thing where it's just like zooming around type of uh, situation. So if you would have just under promised and over delivered, that's what I always do. Set the bar of expectations low and then shoot for high. But you know him, he, he's got to put it up here and then come in at this level. I don't know about that, but I think that, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think your point is good. I think there will be challenges with the system. I, what seemed to be causing the traffic jams is the, how kind of tight that central station is and cars getting in and out. And I think if they can build some of the stations to be bigger, which I don't know if they will or not because the casinos the, are paying for their own stations, but you know they have the space to be able to move cars through. Those tunnels are narrow, so you're going to have, you know, there is a potential for traffic jams, I'm imagining. I'm just uh, waiting for the happen. first the first time there's a flat tire in the tunnel or something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think I brought this up when we first, when you did the tour and had the video and everything, like the escalator coming down into the station, there's not a lot of room to stand. So if you get backed up, it's people coming down an escalator and then they're just crammed into this tiny space with only a few spots on each side. It just wasn't, I don't think it was designed overly well. And maybe that's because they expected it to move quicker. They didn't need a ton of space and that was some of the cost savings. But I, I, yeah, hopefully the, you know, subway stations are huge. So you would hope that they build out a station, something like that, if they're going to have a ton of cars on this. Yeah. The only thing that we can hope for is that they do eventually develop those shuttles you know when they originally announced the system there was gonna be 24 person shuttles that'll take a lot of the vehicles out of the tunnel if you can have you know more people per shuttle so hopefully that's in the works i don't you know that's not part of the plan as announced now so probably not so tesla we'll stretch limos <laughs> yeah, there, there you go all right we'll keep an eye on it but yeah criticism of the vegas loop uh continuing and not a surprise and for once i'll admit there's some challenges going on all right so Confessions of a Las Vegas Bottle Girl. This article is in Business Insider. Uh, you found it. <laughs> Basically uh, talking about some of the crazy things that happen in Vegas nightclubs, what people pay. Uh, what I found was interesting is like to talk about minimums for bottle service, 
you know, people having $30,000 minimums, crazy things like that. That doesn't surprise me, but that the whole thing is the, the show that they put on bringing the bottle over. It reminded me of like Circa. We saw that on that first night at Circa in our video, you know, they had the signs and the people on, you know, now they have sparklers. And I guess the whole battle between the nightclubs is who can put on a bigger show to sell you a $30,000 bottle of champagne. Yeah, for sure. Unless they have live entertainment and stuff, that's the other way they bring people in. They'll have, you know, somebody singing or rapping, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, it reminded me of the circle where the, the video of the girl bringing the bottle into the uh, cabana and holding it up above her head and the fan just chops the top of <laughs> it ruined like a thousand dollar bottle. I mean, it only cost them probably like 75 bucks, but just the, the markup is insane. And that's in, you know, all clubs, but Vegas takes it to the next level. And then the fees associated with it. And we've seen these at the day clubs and, and even the nightclubs, you know, there'll be a $600 fee just for getting the room. And then they'll charge all this other stuff. And, you know, if you do do a club, be, be sure to pay attention to the tip because they automatically add it in at most places. My buddy ran into this when his company went to a place and they spent like $10,000 at a club. They didn't notice that they added it in. So they added another 20% or whatever on top. And basically the girl, you know, made 40%, a little over 40% that night. So she was happy, but watch out for that. That's something that they slide in there for sure. But yeah, these, the minimums are kind of crazy. The bottles, a $30 bottle going for $600 is crazy. And it only goes up from there. Yeah, it gets crazier. And your point is a good one with the DJs and the amount of money that they're making. But it's crazy because a lot of these nightclubs fail in Las Vegas, even despite what they're charging, despite all of this, it's still so competitive you know, to be the it nightclub, to be the place that everybody wants to go. And uh, the other thing I thought was interesting from the article was they said that all the tips are split among the, the servers. So if you get, a you know, a bad table or something like that, it's sort of split evenly. And then it says, like, every once in a while, they'll get a tip of $100,000 or more. And then uh, they have to wire the money to the to the servers because there's not enough cash there to pay out the tips. I thought that was... Uh, that was quite interesting. I was born with the wrong features. I would definitely be bottle <laughs> girl. <laughs> no, but you got to imagine, you know, on the weekends, they're making between five and $10,000 a night, I would assume. So that's kind of crazy when you think about it. I mean, there are some clubs will require them to bring in people like recruit people or stay friendly with people outside of the club. Other ones, they just show up to work and, and do their thing. So I guess it depends where you go. And I'm sure it's highly competitive to get a job. I can't even imagine it's probably harder than getting like a movie role, like an extra movie set role uh, to get in there and, and go through the process and, and everything they require. It's, it's gotta be crazy. Yeah. It can't be, uh, can't be easy to get that, that job, but yeah, it's a fascinating article. We'll put a link down in the description. It is behind a paywall, unfortunately, but uh, there's still some interesting things to find there. All right. So moving on to some quicker stuff, Caesars entertainment. We got some new uh, restaurants to announce. Uh, Peter Luger Steakhouse, the very famous, you know, I think it's the oldest steakhouse in America, oldest steakhouse in New York City, uh, is moving into Caesar's Palace, which is confusing because they already have the old Homestead Steakhouse. But I think Peter Luger is moving into the space that Rayo's abandoned. So right they just by, love Mr. to Chuck. take New York staples and uh, water them down and bring them to Vegas. That's what they love to do. <laughs> so they're, hopefully it'll be good. It'll be expensive for sure. Peter Luger. Uh, known for very, very high quality steaks. The other interesting restaurant announcement was Martha Stewart is bringing her own restaurant to Paris, Las Vegas, that she's uh, she's designing it herself. And another addition to that with the Vanderpump stuff going in there. Uh, she says it's based af off of her house. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, she did spend a lot of time out. there under house arrest, so she would know it well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I wonder... No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Snoop Dogg is going to be uh, involved in it anyway. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I know they're they're good friends and all that. Hey, Martha Stewart, I don't think is a, a big draw. I don't I don't think anybody's going to come to Vegas and have to search out Martha Stewart. Maybe I'm wrong there. Uh, Peter Luger for sure will be a draw, and that's always been a thing. Like when I've walked around Caesar's Palace, this is their premium Caesar's Entertainment, their top notch place in Vegas, and. I know the homestead is nice, but I never really felt like there was anything that was like, oh, this this lives up to Caesar's Palace. So hopefully they can do that with the steakhouse and it'd be a big draw, like a top notch restaurant in Vegas that everybody wants to go to. I feel like they've always had kind of lower tier stuff in there compared to where it should be. So this is a step in the right direction as far as Martha Stewart. OK, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's interesting uh, that how they're revamping the restaurants there. I agree with you. Peter Luger will be a good addition. My guess is maybe. 
you know, the existing steakhouse at Caesars will go away and that venue will turn into something else. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But tons of turnover in the restaurant space in Caesars. And we still have more venues that we probably haven't heard of. So we'll keep uh, keep up on that. Uh, did you see the Oscar Goodman statue? Now, Oscar has his his restaurant at the Plaza. And obviously, he was a very famous mob attorney, made most famous, I guess, by the movie Casino in the 90s. But one of his clients was Anthony Tony Spilatro, who is probably the most prolific killer or alleged killer in Las Vegas history. I think he was uh, expected that he killed 27 people. Oscar Goodman kept him out of jail, and they erected a statue to brag all about it, including a sign that says he killed 27 people and Oscar Goodman kept him out of jail. Uh, <laughs> quite an interesting choice, I guess. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. like it's just a weird thing to to be proud of I guess I don't, but it, it will draw people in potentially people that love the movie will come and want to take pictures with it so I get why they're doing it I don't know if it's in the the best taste uh, but hey it's Vegas so you know well we got the Mike Tyson statue at Resorts World now and then you have uh... which doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah so I mean at least this are... one makes sense that one doesn't make any sense. But I, I like it. I hope that they put up some more interesting statues around town. You know, you could think of like the Rat Pack and some other interesting stuff. But yeah, it's a curious choice to put Spilatro on there. I get putting Oscar Goodman, of course, because he was the mayor of Las Vegas for a long time. He has more of a career other than just being a mob attorney. Uh, probably one of the more famous Las Vegans in history. But uh, no doubt it was his choice to do it. So go check it out at Plaza if you want to see uh, what that looks like. Some other uh, quick rumors here. Somebody posted on Twitter, and I don't believe this is happening, but I thought I would get your opinion on it, that Caesars might be working to swap out all of their chips to move to generic chips across the casinos. I'm not buying it. I haven't seen any other evidence to it. But, you know, chips seem like they're an easy way to differentiate yourself, uh, you know, to put these cool designs. And obviously there's a whole ecosystem of collectors. Well, unless you're a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that chip at Virgin? I Just don't. Just says like... One dollar. It's like the plainest. Chip. It doesn't even say Virgin Hotels on it. It just was like a one dollar chip because oh, I wow. do try to collect some uh, from the casino. So I went up there and I was like, oh, can I, you know, change and play a little bit and got the chip. And I was like, really? I shouldn't even waste my time for this. Like, like there's no, nothing to script on it that says where it's from at all. It just I think it said like Mohegan Sun and that was it. Like, yeah. so it's it's out there. Maybe that's how Mohegan Sun does it across their casinos. Um, oh, yeah, from a business perspective. From a business perspective, I get it because think about how many people like take these chips out of circulation. You're buying more. And if you're buying all the same, you're getting a better discount. You're not replacing as much, all that stuff. Um, except for, you know, if you're rehauling the whole system, you're having a massive purchase up front, you know, to, to transfer everything over. I mean, but that is something that people like about Vegas and, and just casinos in general is collecting these kind of like a keepsake, a dollar, five dollars. It's a cheap thing and they're getting the money for it like you're you printed this chip up and somebody gave you a dollar and kept it so you made money from it so i don't i don't see why you take that away i think overall it, it you know having unique ones adds more value than than you would save by mass producing them yeah i agree i remember the circuit chip that you gave me you gave me a dollar in fact it's up there but a dollar uh circuit chip and i remember how cool the design was on that and uh, i just don't see this happening as much as Caesar seems to be cutting things. I also think there's some legality to like changing out chips. You have to post something in the newspaper, if I remember right, or at least it used to be that way in the day. Back in oh, the day. Oh, that's true. Because if you yeah. bring in an old chip, you won't get money for it anymore. Yeah, they have or, to put you have that, a time frame. Yeah. Yep. So we'll, we'll see. But I, for now, I don't think that's happening. I think it's just a, uh, a rumor on Twitter. All right, let's end with talking about Resorts World. There is a rumor that uh, Las Vegas locally posted that they're thinking about building an NBA arena, or at least they're trying to court an NBA team to, to have the arena there. Uh, we've talked about how T-Mobile Arena is ready for an NBA team, so we already have the venue for it. We don't really need another one. I mean, it's a good idea. They have, I guess they have some land there, but uh, I don't see this happening either. Do you? Get, get your restaurants open first. How about that? You know, like keep yeah. them open past 9 p.m. Focus on that. Versus, you know, building an NBA team that you don't need. And and I don't even know if people want. But like you said, T-Mobile is a perfect venue for it. They're, you know, in Detroit, the Red Wings and the, uh, the Pistons, the hockey and basketball team, share the same arena. They used to be in two separate ones. One was in the suburbs. One was downtown. And when they built the new facility, both teams went into it. So it can easily be done. 
doesn't cost any more money. T-Mobile's state of the art, brand new. There's no purpose in this unless, you know, this is a last ditch eff effort from Resorts World to try to get people to come down there because it's not doing so well. You know, but still, even then, you're only talking about 40, 50 games a year. So it's not even that much. Like you're investing all this money for, you know, a, a couple months a year of people. I don't know. I don't see it. Well, speaking of Resorts World and Genting, uh, it's been in the news this week. Maybe you heard it. Maybe you didn't. But Genting Hong Kong has filed for complete liquidation, bankruptcy. Now, Genting Group owns several different companies. There's the main company is Genting Malaysia, which owns the Resorts World here in Las Vegas, New York, a bunch of casinos in uh, in London or in England uh, and elsewhere. The Singapore property is owned by its, its own company. And then there was the Hong Kong property, which owned three different cruise lines along with Resorts World Manila and then a couple of shipyards in Germany. And it's those shipyards that brought the company down, apparently, uh, where uh, the German government just blocked them getting any funding. And so they're going to complete liquidation. So Genting uh, is, you know, in the news in that they're one, you know, that they're, they're one of their subsidiaries is filing bankruptcy, but that won't affect Resorts World Las Vegas, which is owned by the main company. Although taking a, a huge company with like, you know, a lot of cruise ships, uh, the Resorts World Manila, that's a huge hit for, for Genting. So we'll see how that all plays out, but shouldn't affect Las Vegas, at least for the time being. So they're, uh, they're at fault for all our shipping delays then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, actually, they're building, they have World Cruises, which is their, their newest kind of luxury cruise line, which is based out of, uh, going to be based out of uh, China. And, you know, most of their cruise ships are in Asia. Uh, but their new cruise ship was one of the largest in the world, it was going to have a roller coaster at sea, kind of like the Carnival ship. It's almost finished construction. So it's interesting that they have these cruise lines, Crystal Cruises, a long time luxury cruise line uh, is owned by them. Uh, so somebody will probably buy some of these assets, obviously, but, and so these cruise lines may go on, they may not. Uh, Crystal Cruises just suspended all their sailings until they can figure this all out. So we'll see uh, how it all works out. I don't know. Resorts World Manila is sort of a joint venture, so maybe the partner there will keep that going. So as of now, uh, we still don't know everything is happening, but they are going for a full liquidation. So it's not like they're trying to restructure the company in any way, meaning that, uh, you know, this will, uh, this will affect those properties, but not the, not Resorts World in New York or Bimini or uh, the ones in uh, the UK or Vegas or Malaysia. So, yeah, it'll be maybe. interesting to see if there's any ripple effect. I, I, I wouldn't assume so because they've kind of segregated them all, but you know, maybe not build an NBA uh, arena when you're <laughs> str struggling in other areas, to, you know, build up what you got. But uh, yeah, I think it's the same as like the rumor of the Oakland A's coming in and being right on the strip. Like, Okay, let's throw a flyer out there and see what's what. But I don't know. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I, I agree. Let us know what you guys think about any of the topics we covered here. What do you think about the Oscar Goodman statue, the Resorts World uh, NBA, or the bottle service at the clubs? Share some of your better bottle service memories. I'm sure people out there have some amazing stories to tell. Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you next time.